And now for something completely different. The Aegis Defence Line is a perfectly serviceable piece of terrain. If you like the Starship Troopers vibe, but I don't. I have an inner goth that I don't let out. So I decided to tame this little black eyelinered beast and make some gothic inspired Aegis Defence Line for the Sisters of Battle, because why not? One thing that Games Workshop does do very, very well with its scenery is that they are really nice kits with a fair amount of modulation. But if you're not playing Cadians or Space Marines, there aren't many options for you to make your scenery really fit in with the aesthetic of your army, unless you want everything to look blocky and nasty. I took out some three millimeter foam ball and I got the measurements for the Aegis Defence Lines online, so they're roughly accurate. There's probably a couple of millimetres out on each one. I used these archway stencils from War Office Game Supplies for all of the archways on this project. I had to do a lot of stenciling and a lot of cutting of archways for this project. They were an absolute ton. It was a bit of a pain in the bum, but once you get into the workflow and trying to get these lines straight, I think most of the archways come out looking pretty good. Some of them are a little bit wonky, but when you slap enough filler in there, you can hide those mistakes fairly well. So I decided on a look and a feel for these. So I wanted one large arch and four small for the larger defense line sections, and then just one large arch for the four smaller. Now, foam board itself is quite a lightweight and flexible material, but we're going to cure that later on. You can see here that I'm really only cutting the top of the archways on the backing pieces. That was because I was going to cut out tons and tons of smaller archways just to create a little bit more depth and add a little bit more ornateness and strength to the defence lines themselves. I cut out so, so, so many tiny, tiny archways. It was a bit like punishment, but actually after a while, when you get down it into a process and you figure out the way to do it in a nice, clean way, it's actually kind of fun. And uh, there's just something about satiating my inner goth. It was just really nice to see this sort of gothic architecture come to life. I'm really tempted to do some more terrain builds for the Adeptus Sororitas. I'm not too sure what to do next, maybe just a standard building in the style of some of the GEW kits, or if you have any ideas on a current terrain building that GW do that you would like to see in the style of the Adeptus Sororitas, just leave a comment below. Um, I'm quite happy to have a look at it, I'm kind of pumped for it because this was a very different style of building to what I've done before. I've done a lot of stuff in a similar vein to Eric's Hobby Workshop, which is a fantastic channel and he does some amazing builds. But this was a real opportunity to do something quite different. For a lot of this, I was using No More Nails as my gluing method. And it worked really nicely. I was a bit worried about using PVA, especially with these card strip sections that I was using to cap off some of the artworks because PVA would take forever to glue down. But this worked really well. Once you get it all smoothed down because the paper, because the card and the foam of the foam board is porous, it's pretty much dry in a couple of minutes. I used a craft card punch to create the fleur de lis symbols. Now, the fleur de lis is common in European heraldry across many countries and translates from French to English to the flower, the lily. Now, it's been used to represent saints of the Catholic Church of France, such as Saint Joseph and the Virgin Mary. The symbol itself is thought to be a representation of the lily species, Iris florentina. Now, you wasn't expecting a little bit of horticultural reference, but hey, why not mix things up? I'm using nail art beads just to add a little bit of industrial detailing. I wanted the banding on the archways to appear as metal, just to give a little bit of metal texture and feel to this build. 
Now, these beads I got on Amazon, I think they're about £11 for 6,000, I think it is. And I've been using them for absolute months and I haven't even made a dent into the amount of beads that I have. And I've pretty much used them on every project that I've done for months. And they are really good. They are really, really worth having. I use the ramekins from Goo Puddings for all sorts of hobby reasons if I'm mixing up sealants or if I need paint water nice and quickly and I heard a rumour on Twitter that they are no longer going to be giving glass ramekins with goo puddings. There shall be no peace until the ramekins are restored. To seal down the build as a lot of it is very thin cardboard, I used wall filler poured into the most important thing that is a glass ramekin mixed in with PVA glue matte varnish and a little bit of dishwasher rinse aid and I mixed that all together and gave it a good slabbing all over the miniatures. Now this mixture will form a double duty. One, it will seal down the model. Two, it will provide a nice concrete texture, something with a little bit of grain that when it's painted on, it will make it not look like just cobble. Make sure if you use this mixture that you dab it on. If you just brush it on, you will end up with brush streaks on it. But by giving a good stippling motion, you end up with this very nice rocky texture on there. At this point, I realized that I actually needed some foam backing just to look like some concrete pillars and posts to keep these walls up. After the posts were glued on with a little bit of No More Nails, just to say this stuff actually glues to XBF foam really well as well, I slathered another couple of coats of wall filler, PVA and matte varnish, making sure to cover up the exposed bits of foam on the wall sections. As this is foam balled when you cut into it, if you don't cover up the foam, it can leave some really nasty looking textures that can really ruin the immersive feel of your terrain. Now, there are lots of different ways that you can cover this up. You can see for the archways, I just used bits of cobbled. I attempted to do that with this, but because the sections were so long, it turned out to be a lot more complicated than I would really have liked, and it just would have taken too long. So I just decided to use filler instead. Now, I used AK Interactive Rough Ground Texture for all of the soil details at the bottom of the walls and the base. I absolutely love this stuff and I've gotten through pretty much a whole pot in three months, which is kind of a testament to how much I am using this stuff. I'm using it on pretty much everything, but it's one of those pots that um, I've already bought another one because it's really useful to have in your arsenal. So at this point, I was gonna spray paint them. So I, I looked through my drawer to see what spray paints I had, and I had a couple of different ones. So I glue tacked them down to a bit of cardboard. I used Wraith Bone, and then a white, just to give a little bit of a Xenophil highlight. And this is where things kind of go a little bit wrong. So I used clear lacquer from Halfords because my plan was to do chipping effects. I'd use the gray textures, stick down chipping medium, and then paint over it. One thing I didn't account for was that wall filler is porous and foam melts when exposed to <laughs> clear lacquer from a spray can. So I thought I had sealed these down and they really, really weren't. You can see the just the foam backing bits as well, they have completely melted through and it was a little bit of a disaster. So I ended up having to go back in and fill all of these areas in and then reseal them down with matte varnish and PVA glue just to correct the errors. And at this point, I kind of decided not to use the chipping medium because I'd already messed it up to quite a significant degree and I thought, you know what, let's just not use the airbrush, let's have this as a completely paintbrush only project. So I used latex masking paint. I think this is from Revel, I think. 
and I've had this pot for about seven years. So this will form all of the basis of all of the chipping. To colour the wall sections in, I used permanent marker ink from Molotown and this stuff is just gorgeous. It has got a wonderful flow, fantastic coverage and it just slides all across the model. There wasn't a moment where I was struggling to get the ink off of my brush. The coverage was beautiful and crystal clear and yeah, it was just absolutely gorgeous. I decided to use a copper colour for all of the framework around the archways and for the symbols and some of the metal beads. I wanted to use a verdigris effect on them just to add a little bit more weathering and a little bit of colour interest because I was going to be using dulled blacks and red and purple and I thought a little bit of a bluey green colour would just add a little bit more interest in there. I used Molotow Black to cover up all of the wall section and once again Molotow is a fantastic ink, it just absolutely flows, the coverage was wonderful and this is pretty much a bone white colour, light grey and you can see it just absolutely covers fantastically. No fuss, no muss, this was a one coat job and it just goes and goes, it's fantastic. I've got a big bottle that was about 20 quid but I've been using it for a month and I've hardly made a dent in it. It is that good. I use it for all of my base coats. I completely rant and rave about these colours. For some reason, the latex masking was on a little bit stronger this time and it took a fair bit of effort to chip away and get off. So I just scratched it off with the end of my paintbrush. And this also has another bonus effect that when you scratch it off, because of the raised bumpy textures from the wall filler, you actually create tons and tons of tiny little chips that really give it a realistic scratched away paint look. And I was really happy with how this came out. This has come out a lot better than when I've done chipping effects with latex paint before. And it's something that I'm definitely going to do again because the effect was really realistic, really nice and it's just brilliant. Instead of using my homemade washes, I decided to just slap down a coat of Agrax Earthshade. This has been sat in a bag for almost three years. I just haven't used any of the GAW washes and I kind of forgot just how good they were because it went down really nice, muted down all of the colours. I kind of forgot why this is such a massive favourite uh, within the hobby. For the basing I used City Rubble from Geek Gaming's range and this is a lovely, lovely ground cover. I lightly brushed the verdigris effect using the GW Oxide colour. I went kind of gentle with this on these sections because I'd went quite hard before on this on the previous sections. Now, one way you can get this paint to look really quite nice is if you plaster on a layer and then come back with a damp brush when it's partially dried and just disturb the paint. And that gives a really nice feel to the verdigris look. It makes it look just a little bit more natural and a little bit more real. I used a multitude of different pigment powders because I really wanted these barricades to look really dirty and filthy, but I wanted there to be a good range of different colors to make it look like that the earth had actually been disturbed around these defense lines. As if the defense lines had been used on multiple battlefields and had been moved around. So the defense lines themselves are really battered, really, really dirty, but you can tell by the different types of earth tones that are around it. They've been reused multiple times and there's all of these different types of earths around them. That's it guys. That's how to scratch build defense lines for your sisters of battle. Now you don't have to go to such an extreme with the colors that I did. I absolutely battered these to death, but that's my personal aesthetic. I like things to be rough, dirty, and yeah, just battered.